Hello Internet, I'm Ken from the Computer Clan here today with a demo of Windows 10 build 10049, which includes Project Spartan, the new web browser. Now we have done videos in the past on other features involving Windows 10, so you can watch those if you'd like. But for today, we're just going to cover some of the new features in some of the more recent builds. So, as we can see here, there is a new login screen. That looks pretty nice, so I'll just sign in here. There is also a new installer screen, and in a future build, there is a new icon set coming up as well. I've gotten a lot of comments about people's feelings in relation to the icons, so don't worry, there's some new ones coming up. One question I receive a lot is, is the start menu translucent? It is. You can see I have this blue color scheme going on, and the wallpaper is still soaking through the background there. Another thing I'd like to cover is the update to the task viewer. So let's say I have a couple apps open. There is this new task view button, which I can click, and it will show me a bird's eye view of all the apps. And this isn't new necessarily with Windows 10 builds, but the new changes have to do with dragging to a new desktop. So I can drag one of these windows and just plop it on the plus button, and it will assign a new desktop to that window. In addition, I have right-click functionality as well for closing and moving, but now that nice new drag and drop functionality is present, so I can group windows like this. I can even add more desktops. And I can switch between them just using that interface. But there's also a convenient shortcut. Control, Windows key, left and right arrow. If I press those buttons, I can just swipe between these desktops with my keyboard super easily. Alt-Tab also provides a similar view to that task view, but the task view mode itself is what provides access to the desktop switcher. The Xbox app is still being developed, but there are some features that we talked about earlier in regards to game DVR and streaming Xbox games. Users can play Xbox games from their Xbox on their PC with Windows 10, and there is also that new game DVR functionality. So, for example, I can go to the game DVR mode here, and anything I record will show up right here. However, I can still look at the community and see other little game recordings that people are recording on their systems and publishing. And if I want to connect to an Xbox, I can click the connect button, and it will search for an Xbox on my network, or I can enter in an IP address. I'd also like to reiterate on the point from a past video that windows are now more dynamic with this modern UI look so they're more responsive. So for example, I have this full screen calculator, but if I drag it into just a small window, parts of the interface automatically hide themselves. However, as I expand this window, you will see more items become available like the history and the memory sidebar. All right, now let's change to the big entree for today, Project Spartan. So word is that Internet Explorer will still be supported. I believe that's for like legacy support. But Project Spartan is the code name for Microsoft's brand new web browser that they're going to be pushing. Again, this is a technical preview. It is not done. <laughs> so let's take a look at it here. This is the interface. The tabs are part of the top bar here. So I can switch between tabs, add tabs. Let's say I go to, well, if I go to the Apple website, that would be kind of contradicting. <laughs> let's just go to another site. Let's go to my favorites here. So I have my favorites bar right here and it just opens up a sidebar. I can go to my websites, maybe go to the Mystery Science Theater website. And as you can see, more tabs just add themselves up on the top and I can close them just by clicking the X. Pretty simple stuff. If I want to bookmark a page, I just click the star and it adds it to my favorites. I can assign the name, make a new folder and assign a folder where the favorite can go to. And as you will see, this example is a PDF. There is now integrated PDF viewing support inside of Spartan. I'd like to use this web page to demonstrate one of the new Spartan features, note taking. So I can press this button right here, make a web note, and it will make a snapshot of this web page with active links. So now I can annotate it. I can use the marker. I can use the highlighter. I can even add little notes here. So for example, if I want to circle something, Hey, this Surface 3 is new. Well, that's just great. That's fantastic. I can even highlight text if I want to. Let's see if that'll work. Oh, I can highlight anything. Yeah, so I want to go there later. Uh, maybe I want to make a note. So I can make a little note there and say, buy this product for Jimmy. He's been wanting one since Christmas. There we go. 
So as you can see, I can make these notes, I can save them, and I can share them. If I click the share button, I'll be brought to the share panel, and when I'm done, I can hit exit. Another new feature in Project Spartan is the reader mode. So for example, if I have an article like this, I can read it on the website, but as you can see, there's kind of some clutter surrounding the information I want to get at. This book button is the reading view. If I click it, as you can see, it creates a simplified view of this article, and it even converts the font into a serif font, so it's a little bit easier to read, kind of like in print. The search bar can still act as a search engine, and it can still have web addresses entered into it but it can also be integrated with Cortana to deliver at-a-glance information. For example, if I start typing a stock symbol, as you can see, boom, I have at-a-glance information right within the search there. And Cortana can also display information just by right-clicking on a highlighted section. So if I highlight Marvel here and right-click, I can say, ask Cortana, and Cortana will give me information on anything I select. So here's some information on Marvel. Hey, there's Stan Lee. I'm going to be meeting him soon. That will be fun. So that's great. But it also works as a dictionary. That's part of the Cortana service. So for example, if I don't know what the word bench is, I don't know, that might be a little sad. But hey, I'm not one to judge. Let's say I don't know what bench means. Just a sec. Here's what I found. And then it acts as a dictionary. All right, there's another menu. Sharing functionality, printing, Find on page, all of those options are right under that menu. And settings, so you get brought to this new standard settings panel that, again, you'll see throughout many applications with these typical switches, radio buttons, and pop-up lists, etc. So there's a lot of options in here. For example, I can disable certain add-ons, which is pretty slick. I can make the browser send do not track requests, block pop-ups. I can even clear browsing data just right from here. I could choose what it should clear and what it shouldn't clear. Pretty simple. This menu also provides me with developer tools. I can click the button and a separate window will be opened up. For example, I am viewing the Microsoft website here and I have a DOM Explorer, a console, debugger, and a whole bunch of other panels here. It looks like I can even disable certain styles with the CSS, that's pretty cool. So that covers the main stuff I wanted to look at with Windows 10. Over the past few months, we have gathered almost 2 million views on our Windows 10 demos, and we've gotten a lot of questions, so I would just like to go over them now. Is Windows 10 going to be free? The answer is, if you are on Windows 7 or Windows 8.1, and you upgrade within the first year on your PC, and your PC is compatible, yes, Microsoft will give you Windows 10 for free. Another question is, when is it coming out? What we're hearing is July. Now, is that going to happen or not? We're not sure, but July is what we're hearing. A lot of people were also asking, is there a way I can tell Microsoft things I don't like or things that need to be fixed? If you're part of the Windows Insider program, yes, that is really what this is for. Microsoft wants you to give them feedback. So there is a feedback app, I believe. Yes, it's called Windows Feedback, built right into the system. Just use that if you need to send any kind of feedback to Microsoft. Many people also ask, can I get rid of the tiles? Yes, it's simple. You just right click and hit unpin from start. Poof, they're gone. There's a lot of questions about the control panel. Now, the new settings app is what Microsoft is trying to push. However, the old control panel is still present. For example, if you right click and go to personalize, you still get the old control panel. And if I hit control panel home, you'll see this still does show up. Will this be in the final build? Maybe for legacy purposes. I'm not sure how much longer we're going to be seeing this built in though, because again, they're pushing this more streamlined interface. Others have asked, is there support for Steam? Yes, right here. I've ran Steam games. I've ran the Steam client. It does work. Another common question is, can I use Windows 10 as my main system? I highly do not recommend using a technical preview in layman's terms, a beta software for your main operating system. Install this software on a different computer or a different partition on your computer or in a virtual machine. That way, if something goes wrong, it won't screw up your main startup disk and your personal data can be more safe. The disk management app built into Windows can help you create a new partition on your hard drive. There's also many third-party solutions to do this. Another question is, when you update, will it delete all of your personal information? That would be kind of silly, honestly, if it did that. It gives you an option to do a clean installation, and you do have those options to refresh your PC if you want to, 
but doing a normal upgrade will keep all of your files and update the system. It will not erase any personal data. So rest assured, you can do a simple upgrade without formatting your disk. Many people also ask, is it possible to disable Cortana? Yes, it is. I'm using the search interface right now without Cortana on. In the hamburger menu up here, I can go to settings and look, I can turn it right off. So for those who don't want it on, you don't need to have it on. I believe it even prompts you the first time you open up this panel if you want Cortana on or off. So there you have it. I hope that answers some of your questions. And if you want to know more, if you have any questions, you want to ask me anything about Windows 10, feel free to leave a comment and I will try my best to get back to you. And if you want to try this for yourself, join the Windows Insider program and you can choose which lane, the slow lane or the fast lane, you want to be on to get the new builds. So thanks for tuning into this demo, and I will see you in the not-too-distant future. Do you want to check out our new comedy series, Ken Cinema Shenanigans? If you do, you can watch the pilot right here. Or do you want to watch another video by us? Then click here. There's also developer tools built in so I can click that button and get all of my fancy developer gadgets. It actually launches a separate little window. It's loading up right now. Kind of. Hello, Bueller? Bueller? That must be why we're not shipping Windows 98 yet. <laughs> Hello? Hello, McFly? Anybody home? I can't seem to get any of the DVR stuff to work, and I don't own an Xbox, so I can't show much of that, and it just crashed on me. Okay, let's try that again. <laughs> Woo! Technical preview. All right, let's do that again. So no need to worry about that. And hey, a notification. Yeah! Bye-bye.